This past week was an eventful one. One of my children required an emergency medical procedure. Thank God they are now fine. Necessitating my first extended visit to the hospital in many years. In fact, outside of a labor ward, it has been decades since my last such stay. As a rabbi, of course, I was mining many facets of the experience for metaphors and takeaways. A hospital is, in many ways, a world of its own. Time assumes a unique rhythm, and the world outside feels distant and inaccessible. The hours feature a strange blend of interminable waiting and sudden bursts of frenetic activity, and you are never quite sure which of the two you will encounter at any moment, exacerbating the tension of both. It was interesting to focus on the role of physical health during a week when we prepared to read the following verses. You are children to God. You shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes over the dead, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Torah then continues to explicate the laws of kosher animals, fish, and fowl. All of this is quite jarring. The immediate shift from soaring prose likening us to children of God gives way to these technical references to tearing out our hair and consuming specific animal species. Perhaps that is entirely the point. What does holiness mean in Judaism? How are we identified vis-a-vis our creator? In the most physical, human terms. We are children of God. And what, we wonder, does that entail? Protecting our dignity, not succumbing to excessive mournfulness to the point that we injure ourselves, avoiding spiritually impure foods. I am not familiar with another system that sanctifies human life to this degree, that introduces such prosaic matter into the domain of the sacred. The imagery of the Jewish people as children of God resonates in another way as well. The nursing staff at the hospital this past week was remarkable, so unbelievably dedicated and attentive. In light of our teaching, we begin to appreciate that caring for others means caring for God's children, far more consequential than just being nice or doing a good deed. We are actually shepherding the most precious issue of the divine in their time of need. Here again, the sublime encounters and transforms the material. And yet, despite the Jewish emphasis on human holiness, on elevating the mundane, and on attending to God's children in this world, our verse delivers another, almost opposite message. The prohibition introduced here against tearing out hair or cutting ourselves refers to times of great distress at the death of a loved one. We might ask, is not the loss of human life, which we have until now described as so consecrated, Cause for immense anguish? The great commentator, Orachayim, employs a parable. Imagine a father who sends his child off to a faraway land to launch a business there. Over time, the son befriends many locals, becoming a staple of his community. Eventually, though, the father summons him home, and the son happily complies. This young man has not been lost, although the far-off townspeople can no longer enjoy his presence. Rather, he is returning to his father returning home. In Judaism, death does not signify the end of one's existence, but only the end of one's earthly existence, marking our return to our Father in Heaven, of whom we are considered children. And so, while the loss of a dear relative pains us, those departed, in fact, are much closer to their source. In this frame, unrestrained, lugubrious reactions are unwarranted, and in a sense betray our denial of the eternality of the soul. As we have expressed on countless occasions, Judaism demands complex thinking. We embrace and celebrate human life in an almost unprecedented fashion, investing it with holiness and taking extreme measures to preserve it. And yet, when it ends, we mourn, we process our pain, but we move on secure in our belief that our loved ones remain children of God far beyond their mortal journey. Shabbat Shalom.